So this is a walking wardrobe we're going to be doing. First of all, we'll cut all the arc. We'll underlay it all first, and then we'll go around with a board, place it up to the architraves in the architraves that within the room. Use a multi-tool, cutting them nice and straight, and then knocking them out of a screwdriver, trying to keep the architraves clean as possible because we don't want to damage, obviously, the rest of it. Because obviously, as the laminate goes down, we then bead it, and the beading just finishes to where the skirting finishes. So. We cut them so that the wood can slide under. And you're ready to go. So mark out a load of balls, click them together from one end of the room to the next, ready for back marking into that wall. And as you can see here, we use a wood cutter, chopper, guillotine, whatever you want to call it, 38 quid from B&Q to cut our straight cuts. As you can see here, we are now getting ready to back mark it into the shape of that wall. So going forward, just a tip, if the customers do not provide refreshments, then you don't do the job properly. <laughs> <laughs> what we're doing, we're setting up where, the, where we just cut the architraves. So we're gonna back mark it into the shape of that wall. So in order to do that, we need a marker board, cut a, cut a quarter off of a full board. And then we'll cut the sides down and then we'll show you how to back marking. So just cut that big tongue off with a Stanley blade to snap it. And you've got a nice section, so. What people have got to know is, once we've got the marker board, that point now, is that point on the board. Got to be first time, John. I guess watching this speed is optional. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're, the, and what, when you're trying to film something, be on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing here, John? Tell, tell the fans. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> the marking the ball. I'll back marking it into the shape. Of the wall. Once it's all lined up, clicked in, and underneath the architraves, you then put your spaces in, leaving a five mil gap minimum, and secured all around the rest of the walls, so that when you hit against it, it doesn't move. So when it comes to most floors now, they like to have like a four bevel groove around the edges, which will show you every individual board. So what you wanna do is have like a random effect pattern. So you don't have like a, some people have like a brick bond. I personally think that looks a little bit too repetitive, doesn't give it that natural look. So you basically wanna stagger it but in a random effect. So I normally go by a full board, half, 
three quarter and a quarter, and I'll repeat that process throughout the room. That way, once it's done, it looks quite effective. So as you can see with this click system, it's quite an easy one. It's called a uniclick system. So therefore you can bash it over on the sides. You can bash it downwards. Some other systems are quite tricky. Um, I can do other videos on the other systems because they're fitting slightly different. But if you've got a uniclick system, then it's a, it's a good system to work with or to learn with. Always give the laminate the final little push over with your knocking block just to make sure that it securely into that click system. You can also, with this system, lock it in this way. So down on the end, and then hit it across with your palm on the sides, but also giving it that final push with your knocking block. Reverse the board, so I can mirror image. This guillotine tool is absolutely brilliant. We use it, we can cut inside, keep the dust to an absolute minimum. Oh no, what are you going to do? <laughs> Pass me a ball, John, I've got this. So if you get stuck, then you've got a little cut out to do. I'll show you how to do it. So, get your marker balls. Ball just gonna sit there and then you basically line it up in line where it's got to go. That's all lined. Remember, this line is that line on the board, always leaving a five mil gap. Mark your point, mark your point. Obviously. Tilt the pencil so you've got your five mil gap all the way. Drawing your lines and that'll give you what you need. Once you cut your strips and you knock the first bit over, get yourself a little healer or a jemmy or a crowbar just to give it a little wedge so it fits in nice and snug. Back, get yourself one of these tools. Mm. You can get these tools from B&Q in the flooring department, they're absolutely brilliant. All them strips, you can either wedge them over from the other end or you can bash them across with that end. So they're quite strong and sturdy, perfect.
So my work partner is going to show you how to put a strip in. <laughs> <laughs> No part, we're going to show you how to tighten it up. <laughs> no stress. Here we go. Always, when marking the strip, always get the length first. <laughs> Mimic the bowl, so line it up. We're coming to the end now. We're going to show you the final result. If in the future you come across a laminate floor that don't quite go together or the system's slightly different, drop me a message in the comments and I will gladly help you or advise you how to put it together. Um, obviously, we finished this room with a bit of beading to match. You can have your skirtings off, but it's each to their own. We're going to be doing more videos like this with different styles of flooring and also different cliff systems. So like and subscribe for more videos.